Now we'll walk you through the entire process of auto calibration for your 22 IDEX V3. To start, you want to make sure you're connected to the machine, then go to web interface, dashboard, scroll down to macros, and you will see auto calibration macro. Select that, and now you have an option to set the temperature of your nozzle. For the temperature, you want to select the filament that was loaded last time in the tool head. For example, this is a brand new machine, so I am selecting 220 degrees for left nozzle and the same for right nozzle. I am also prompted to remove the bill plate, so I can go ahead and do that. The way auto calibration works is by touching the bill plate. So we want to make sure we are sensing the aluminum bill plate itself, not the carbon fiber plate. What the machine is doing right now, it preheated both tools to the temperature I set. I set 220 degrees, but it actually went a little bit lower. This is intentional to make sure we don't have molten plastic leaking from the nozzle. We want it to be soft to make sure the nozzle is clean, but we don't want it to be flowing out the nozzle. So machine automatically preheat to the temperature and now machine is going through automatic homing procedure. As you saw in the last step of preparation, machine was thoroughly cleaning the nozzle using those wire brushes. What you need to look for is to make sure that nozzle is slightly overlapping with the brush, about two, three millimeters. So nozzle is cleaned with the brush, but you want to make sure it's not too high so the brush is not actually executing too much force on the nozzle. What I'll do, I will take a supplied metal brush and follow the prompt they got to make sure the nozzle is clean. They are pretty clean after the self-cleaning, but I'll just double check that. And I want to make sure that with the metal brush, I am not shortening any components like heaters, temperature sensors, or fans. So I want to be very careful when doing that, not to touch anything. And I also want to be very careful because it's hot, not as hot as it could be, just 175 degrees, but I still don't want to touch it. All right, it's very clean. Now I select the nozzles are clean and I have verified that. Machine is starting to home second time to make sure everything is up to spec. And after homing is finishes, it will be ready to start auto calibration. Okay, as we can see, machine is finishing the last steps of homing and it will start auto calibration and now it is starting to probe. It is probing in the middle of build plate, a little bit closer to the center, and what it's doing right now is reading the offset for left-hand side tool by touching the build plate, and it will do the same for right-hand side tool. The way it's moving down with zigzag motion, this is to make sure if there's any residue on the nozzle to cut through. The way it's moving diagonally, very slowly, in terms of Z and more in terms of X, Y, to actually cut through any debris if there is any. I have a notification that nozzle height calibration was successful. This time during auto calibration when measuring the offset for both tools, machine determined that one of the tools was lower than the other one. And we can see it in the web interface. The deviation was pretty big. Usually you would see something less than that. So it's 815 microns. And we have three options. We can either calibrate, skip, or cancel. I'll go with the first one and calibrate. To do the calibration, you need two millimeter hex screwdriver, the one we supplied with your machine. And we can see some prompts. So machine is guiding me through the process. With the screwdriver, we want to undo the screw, which is holding the heat brake in place. Then heat brake will drop a little bit down and then you want to tighten a little bit back. And then machine will go with the bill plate and move the heat brake up to the position where it needs to be. Then it gives you a chance to tighten it back and it will verify the calibration. So we can go through the process now. As you can see, tool head is moving in the position where it is convenient for me to undo this screw and the screw we want to work on is this little guy. So I insert it like this and the 
fan shroud will bend out of the way just a little bit, that's okay. It is a flexible material. So as you can see, the heat brake is now able to move. I don't want it to be too loose, so I will tighten just a tiny bit, just finger tight, but I want to make sure it's still able to slide. No, it was too much. I will undo it as it was, like that. Perfect. All right. And I want to make sure it's a little bit lower so you can see that the heat break, the actual heat break is sticking out. That's okay for this calibration. On the screen, I can see the step one is to loosen the heat break. I did that already. Lower the heat break. We did that already. I can hold it like that to make sure it's not tilted. So as you can see, the nozzle was pushed up. And if you look from the front like that, you will see that your high end is a little bit twisted. This is important to look for. You want to make sure it is perpendicular. It's not twisted like that, nor like that. You want to make sure it's perpendicular. So I'll use another screwdriver just to hold it. I don't want to burn myself. I know it's hot. So I want to allocate the screw. Okay. And now I want to gently twist it to make sure it's perpendicular. And I'll show you later why it's important. Okay, I just hand tighten it. It's okay, it's not the most convenient position. So now the machine will actually give you a chance to tighten in a much better spot. So I can do it more freely now. What I want to do, I want to make sure my heat break, my hot end, isn't twisted. This is especially important because on the right hand side of the high end there is a little crimp and what we need to look for is for this crimp not to shore in with any metal parts that's behind because it will prevent the Z probe from working correctly so your machine won't be working at homing correctly. You want to make sure it's nice and straight and you want to secure it. Okay, it's tight, just hand tight, and I'm ready to continue. So it's going through the same procedure, verifying with the nozzle, probing the bill plate, and it'll go and test the Z offset for both left-hand side, right-hand side tool at the same spot. Sometimes, after you do calibration once, you will have to repeat it just to fine-tune it a little bit. One hint, when you're doing tool height calibration, you want to push on the high end, a little bit down, just a slightly, to make sure it's not lifting above the bed. If you're going through a few cycles and it's asking you to calibrate and recalibrate, you want to press the high end a little bit into the bill plate, just slightly, and then you want to tighten the screw. Might help. It measured and read the nozzle deviation and determined that deviation is within spec, so I do not need to recalibrate it. Right now, machine is finishing the final steps of auto calibration. This is the last one before it's going to do XY alignment. And XY alignment is pretty cool. So it will utilize the hole at the back of bill plate and it will go with each nozzle, probe the center of the hole and make sure the centers are aligned for both nozzles. This way, when you're printing in multi-material modes, when you're doing soluble supports or multicolor parts, your nozzles are always going to be spot on. One thing to look for when doing auto calibration, you always want to inspect your nozzle, especially the part between your radiator and your hot end. You want to make sure that the heat brake is straight and not bent. If it is slightly bent, your auto calibration might not be accurate. So you want to just visually look and inspect if there is any tilt in the hot end. Also, during auto calibration, you will see red box in the web interface, which is normal. As simple as that, the full calibration of your 22 IDEX was done in less than two minutes and machine is ready to go with any filament, any print you would like, you know that it will be perfectly in spec.